Planet Earth thrives on a delicate balance of water. We see rivers flowing, clouds gathering, and rain replenishing the land. Yet there's a hidden engine driving this cycle, evapotranspiration. This process, a combination of evaporation and transpiration, is essential for life as we know it. Let's look at the different types of evapotranspiration and how they affect the water management. Imagine the atmosphere as a thirsty giant, constantly seeking moisture from the Earth's surface. Potential evapotranspiration, PET, represents this thirst, measuring the maximum amount of water that could evaporate and transpire under ideal conditions. Think of Peyti as the atmosphere's potential appetite for water. It's the rate of evapotranspiration that would occur if there was an unlimited supply of water available in the soil and plants. Actual evapotranspiration, AET, reality check for water loss. In this section, we delve into the critical concept of water loss in agricultural and natural ecosystems, focusing on the difference between potential and actual evapotranspiration. While potential evapotranspiration, or PET, represents the atmosphere's ideal water uptake, the reality on the ground is often different. PET is a theoretical measure, assuming unlimited water supply, which is rarely the case in real-world scenarios. This idealized concept helps us understand the maximum possible water loss due to evaporation and plant transpiration under optimal conditions. Actual evapotranspiration, or AET, reflects the amount of water that actually evaporates and transpires, considering the limitations of water availability. AET is a more practical measure as it accounts for the actual conditions plants and soil experience. This includes the availability of water in the soil, the type of vegetation and the specific climatic conditions of the area. Think of AET as the real-world evapotranspiration rate, taking into account factors like soil moisture, plant type and land management practices. For instance, a field with well-irrigated crops will have a higher AET compared to a drought-stricken field. Soil moisture sensors and other technologies help farmers monitor and manage AET to optimise water use and ensure crop health. Unlike PET, which is primarily driven by meteorological factors such as temperature, humidity and wind speed, AET is influenced by both atmospheric demand and the availability of water to meet that demand. This dual dependency makes AET a more accurate reflection of the water dynamics in a given area. Understanding the distinction between PET and AET is crucial for effective water resource management, especially in regions prone to water scarcity. By accurately measuring and managing AET, we can make informed decisions to sustain agricultural productivity and maintain ecological balance. Reference evapotranspiration ET not a standardized measure. Imagine trying to compare water loss from different locations and ecosystems, a challenging task due to varying factors like climate, vegetation and soil. That's where reference evapotranspiration, or ET not, comes in, providing a standardized measure for comparison. ET not represents the evapotranspiration rate from a hypothetical reference surface, typically a well-watered grass surface with specific characteristics. The grass is assumed to be uniform, actively growing and disease-free. The grass is maintained at a fixed height of 12 centimetres, approximately 4.72 inches. The root zone is assumed to be sufficiently deep and well watered, ensuring no water stress. This depth is generally taken to be 0.15 to 0.30 metres. The reference ETO is calculated under hypothetical conditions where the crop is well watered and not under water stress. Crop evapotranspiration, tailoring water needs for crops. Understanding the water needs of crops is crucial for efficient farming and sustainable agriculture. Each crop has its own water requirements depending on factors like growth stage, climate and soil type. For instance, young seedlings need different amounts of water compared to mature plants. Similarly, crops in arid regions require more precise irrigation compared to those in humid areas. Crop evapotranspiration, or ET3, addresses this by estimating the amount of water a specific crop needs for optimal growth. This estimation helps farmers to avoid both underwatering and overwatering, ensuring that crops receive just the right amount of moisture. ETC is essentially the actual evapotranspiration from a crop field, considering its unique characteristics. It takes into account the water lost through both evaporation from the soil and transpiration from the plants. 
This dual consideration is vital for maintaining the health and productivity of the crops. It's calculated by adjusting the reference evapotranspiration or ET not using crop coefficients or KC which account for the water use patterns of different plants. The reference evapotranspiration, ET0, is a baseline measurement that represents the water needs of a reference crop under ideal conditions. By applying the crop coefficient KC, farmers can tailor this baseline to match the specific water requirements of their crops, considering factors like growth stage and local climate conditions. This precise calculation helps in optimizing water usage promoting sustainable farming practices and ultimately leading to better crop yields and resource conservation. Why evapotranspiration matters, the crucial link to water management. Evapotranspiration, the often invisible process of water movement from the Earth's surface to the atmosphere, holds immense significance in the grand scheme of water management. This process is a key component of the water cycle, which is essential for maintaining the balance of our ecosystems. Understanding this process is crucial for managing our precious water resources effectively. By studying evapotranspiration, scientists can predict weather patterns, manage agricultural practices and ensure sustainable water use. This knowledge helps in planning irrigation schedules, conserving water in drought-prone areas and maintaining the health of natural habitats. Imagine evapotranspiration as a giant pump, constantly drawing water from the ground and releasing it into the air. This natural pump is driven by solar energy which heats the Earth's surface, causing water to evaporate from soil, water bodies and plant surfaces. Plants play a significant role in this process through transpiration where water absorbed by roots is released into the atmosphere from leaves. This process influences water availability for various uses, including uh, agriculture, ecosystems and human consumption. In agriculture, efficient water management through understanding evapotranspiration can lead to better crop yields and reduced water wastage. In natural ecosystems, it helps maintain the delicate balance needed for plant and animal life to thrive. For urban areas, it ensures a reliable water supply for daily use and helps in planning for future water needs. By integrating evapotranspiration data with weather forecasts and satellite imagery, we can develop more accurate models for predicting water availability and managing water resources. Community efforts in water conservation can also benefit from this knowledge, promoting sustainable practices that protect our water supply for future generations. Evapotranspiration and irrigation, precision in action. In a world facing increasing water scarcity, efficient irrigation practices are paramount. Evapotranspiration knowledge is crucial for implementing precision irrigation, ensuring crops receive the right amount of water at the right time, optimizing yields while conserving this precious resource. Traditional irrigation methods often rely on generalized schedules or visual observations, leading to overwatering or underwatering. Evapotranspiration-based irrigation scheduling, however, takes a more precise approach and helps in sustainable water management. That's all for today. I hope you like it. Thank you for watching.